And this is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, and we continue with another top-notch musician out of Minneapolis. She is a world-class musician, originally hailing from the San Francisco Bay Area, and she moved to Europe in 1980 and has performed all types of music. She's performed jazz, salsa, pop, rock, flamenco, and Brazilian. She formed her own band, which is called Esther Godinez and the Face Band, and she is currently on a wonderful project in which we talked with Jackie Thompson. It's called Unsigned Twin Cities, and it's on forward recordings. She is all over the music scene, currently tours with George Benson, and I'm going to be seeing them up at the Montreal Jazz Festival in July. She's also worked with Prince, Eric Leeds, Stokely Williams of Mint Condition, and wow, that's a big introduction. She is one talented musician. Her name is Esther Godinez, and we welcome her to the upper room. How you doing, Esther? I'm fine. How are you? Very well, and I, I've got all the pronunciations right on your name, right? Well, well. <laughs> I hate to tell you. <laughs> okay, okay, correct. It was close, but it's Godinez, not Godinez. Okay. But that's okay. I, I, I that was, was good. I was uh, joking with Jackie earlier in the interview that we did, and that I was in the Spanish Honor Society in high school, but I, I, I think I lost a few. <laughs> so what happened? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, it, but, I was telling telling you before we we started this that I was listening to the uh, unsigned Twin Cities and and your uh, songs just jump off as saying I have to get this on the air. So um, why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about uh, La Ultima Canción and and we'll we'll start with there. Okay, well, thanks. I'm glad you like it. That song one time, uh, as I told you earlier, it was from a dream. I was dreaming of this song and the whole story behind it. Um, and I woke up out of the dream, and I had to record this or else I, I would have forgotten it. So I went to my living room, put on my recorder, and I recorded the song. And it was, I recorded the, how I wanted the bass, the melody, the whole concept of the song. And then Jackie approached me and said that she was doing this CD, and she wanted me to submit two songs. So then that's when I called Tommy Barbarella, who has also performed with Prince for eight years or so. And uh, we recorded the song at his house. And it has to do, the premise of the song, because it's in Spanish, is basically a very, it's a love song, basically saying goodbye. La última canción means the last song. But I wanted the vibe to be very sensuous, so it gives the contrast of a very sensuous goodbye. Right. Now, now, when when you're creating and you have that song going in your head and waking up, um, do you? I mean, do you get right down and, and start rolling the tape? Or I did. Right. Yeah. Now, you worked on on the drums, or do you do you also uh, play keyboards? I do. No, I'm not a keyboard player at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> I'm far from being a keyboard player, but I compose. Right. On the piano. Okay. Uh, but Tommy helped me a lot do the melody that I already had. He would play chords, and he came up with some really nice ideas. And some of them I, w I would agree with, some of them I, I wouldn't. As I would come up with some ideas, and he'd say, oh, how about let's try this? So we worked really well together. And, of course, we should uh, also let people know that Tommy Barbarella is uh, a member of Sons of Almighty, another great group out of uh, Minneapolis. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and another group, Movable Feast. Oh, I didn't even know that. So, yeah. Wow. You, you've, you've got a you've got a music scene out there that obviously pushes you pretty good. Yes, um, so, you know what's amazing is it's a, it's quite vast. You know, I'm surprised because even in San Francisco, it seems not as large or not as um, so so many different styles of music here. Now, what uh, initially had you move out to Minneapolis from the Bay Area or from Europe, of which you, you were out there too? Yeah, I was in Europe for about 14 years. I wanted to come back home and be with my family and try to accomplish what I had accomplished there, here. was That, that was to establish myself as a percussionist, vocalist, and lead singer in, in well-known areas, you know. And then I met Peter Shimke, who is originally from Minneapolis. He's a keyboard player. And I came out to Minneapolis with him. That was quite a few years ago. <laughs> so I say it was because of love. 
And uh, how, how was it initially living out there? Did you, did you uh, enjoy it? At first, I wasn't sure, but now I really like it. I really enjoy the winters, the snow. I get out and about in the snow. I like the contrast, the seasonal contrast, and the seasonal change. So, and musically, it's been great. I have a band that I put together here, and it's just the Acero Godinez band. And we do a variety of, like, jazz, Brazilian, Afro-Cuban, and I sing in Spanish, Portuguese, and English. And you're fluent in three languages, right? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I can get away with five. Okay, what are the other two? Italian and French. Oh, okay. So in French, I'm a little weak. I have to practice. I'm br trying to brush <laughs> up because I'm going to be the stab, the translator on the tour. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the manager told me. Yeah, and uh, I, can, I can tell you straight up. I, have you played the Montreal Jazz Festival yet? No, I haven't. Yeah, you, you're really going to love it up there. And, you know. Really? Um, let's let the, the uh, listeners know exactly uh, when you'll be there with George Benson. Okay. Let me look at my itinerary. I will be in Montreal the 4th in Quebec at the Sally Wilfred Pelletier. And that that's a fine venue. I, I know Prince is, Prince is actually playing there two days after you. Are and you kidding? Yeah, he's there uh, July 6th. So. Oh, gosh. So. Too bad. I won't be there. Yeah, I mean, just, just because you're, you're, you're both hard working, but it would be real nice for you to, to reunite on stage. I know. Yeah. Gosh, that's too bad. Yeah. I had fun with him. It was fun. I had a good time. Now, exact, exactly what, what was your time with Prince as far as playing? I know you did a lot of stuff over in Europe. and, and About a year. Okay. And, I, and how did that come about? Well, he saw me performing. He had performed with Patti LaBelle. And there's a club that I perform every Thursday. It's a rock kind of funk band that I perform with the Twin City Jammers, the TC Jammers. With our good friend Jelly Bean. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and every Thursday we perform, and he came in with Patti LaBelle. And he enjoyed the music. Then he came. He called me at my house. He got my number. And he asked me to come and jam on Friday at Paisley. So I did. And then he asked me later on to join them in Las Vegas. And that's how it began. I was with him for about a year. Now, as, as far as uh, working with Prince and, and the stuff you, you know, the music back then, uh, any difference? Uh, from how you run a band and that he runs a band, or you take some some heads from well, him. How do you mean? Uh, as far as do, how do you run your band? Is it, do you take some some stuff from the people you work with, Prince? I, I know he's legendary for for those rehearsals. Oh, he's very strict. But when I was with him, it's he wasn't really as hardcore as he was in the previous years. You know, um, he's. I think I don't know how it is now. My the guitar player that plays with the Mike Scott plays in my band, and it's not as difficult or as intense as it was, like, say, the last four years, he's slacked off quite a bit. He's not, his rehearsals aren't as strenuous, you know. And my rehearsals, because I've had bands for quite some time in Europe, so I like to, what I do is I get a tape and I get the music to the musicians, and they have to learn everything, because they have charts also. So they have charts and a tape, so when we come to rehearse at my house or wherever, um... They're familiar with the songs, and we can just run them. So everybody in your band is is proficient at reading music charts. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, Esther, we are going to get into the song which we we spoke on that you collaborated with Tommy Barbarella, and uh, we'll listen. I tell you this: we've already played it here on the station. It's a fantastic song. It's called La Ultima Canción. And um, anything else you want to add to that? As, as far as no, you did it yeah. just fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my special guest is Esther Godinez, and uh, she will return to the Minneapolis special, The Upper Room with Joe Kelly, in just a few moments. And that was La Ultima Canción from Esther Godinez, and she's on the great new project coming out of Minneapolis, St. Paul, called Unsigned Twin Cities, and it's on forward recordings. And I should let our listeners know before we talk to Astaire a little more, uh, you can go to the website, www.unsignedrecordings.com, and they have all sorts of information. You can click on uh, Astaire's name and get a complete biography on her and has uh, a, a sample of the song and just information, and it will be in stores June 26th, Unsigned Twin Cities, 
And we welcome back to the upper room Esther Godinez. And, you know, that's, that's a fantastic song and um, just a great project. I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved with Jackie Thompson and this whole project? Well, she was managing uh, MPG Records over out in Paisley. And I was working with her while I was with Prince, and we became very good friends and actually become better friends since we are, we're, now that we're no longer with Prince, not for that reason, but we have more time to see each other. And she started her own management company. Okay. And, and you have uh, various uh, Minneapolis musicians on that, and there was, uh, what, was it tough to, to narrow down what songs you wanted to have on the release? Mm. Not really, because I wanted to put something. I definitely knew I wanted to put, so it seems. But then, uh, and then I wanted to put something different, and something that I haven't, something new. And I had a, a concept and an idea that I've been working a project separate from my band and the live recording I've done with them, with Tommy. That we wanted to record something along the lines of everything but the girl, but in Spanish and in Portuguese, and more programmed, more loops, something like that. So basically I had this idea in mind, we did, and I thought this would be a good way to get it off the ground. And I guess that, let's talk the music, the, 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 the uh, technical stuff, as far as being a percussionist. Um, what, what kind of setup with, with George Benson uh, do you take on the road? I have my congas, two congas in the front. Bongos right above. On the left and the right, I have a splash cymbal and then a tambourine hooked so I can just hit it. On my right, I have a splash and another tambourine. I have a foot pedal for, with a bell on my, for my left foot. And then if, on my right-hand side, if I'm facing my percussion, I have a table and that has my shakers, triangles, guidos, my chimes are hanging on the table. There's a certain extension. And then to my left, from the congas to my left, are my timbales. And I have my timbales. I have blocks and two bells. So do you have a specialty that you're known for as far in the percussion? Singing and playing at the same time. <laughs> okay. Because I like, what I do is also doing my solo. I improvise something. So I'm playing uh, timbales. Then I go to my... Uh, Congas, and I like to always sing something, and I just I'll usually improvise it there at the moment, whenever I'm feeling maybe the music, the song, or whatever, and I play along with it. So basically, I'm doing pregones and I'm soloing. Now touring with George Benson, uh, what song? Oh, wait a minute, one thing, and my bird calls. Oh, okay. Oh. I like to do bird calls. Wow. Or sounds with my voice. So, so you you've got a lot going on on stage at one time. Well, I'm yeah. trying not to get in anyone's way, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, the current band you're touring with, George Benson, did you want to mention some of the folks you're working with in the band? Well, there's uh, Tom Hall on keyboards. The musical director is David Witham. The drummer is Michael White. He's played with everyone, Mays, um, Frank, Frank, Frankie Beverly. Um, then you have Stanley Banks, who's playing the bass, and he's out of New York. And then Michael O'Neill is the rhythm guitar and background vocalist. And he's quite established in Los Angeles. And then so, there's me. And, and that's that's definitely important. You know, you're, you're right up there. <laughs> and now, George Benson, of course. Now, you, you've traveled all over the world. You've lived. You're just, just an international uh, world-class musician. Um, with, with the Esther Godinez band, uh, to take it, what, what are some of the spots that uh, you, you really want to take your own band to eventually? I want to, after we just recorded a live CD at the Dakota in St. Paul, and I want to establish the band as a touring band. I want to open that acts or lead the same and do the circuit basically that I'm doing now with George Benson, the jazz festivals. I would like my band to do that. Who, who, and you know the ultimate win a Grammy, of course. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Now, your current band uh, that you that you front, uh, tell us about some of the members in the band, because I know some of them have been on our show and, and just great people, too. Oh, man. We have Eric Leeds on saxophone, and he also played with Prince, and he's a great horn player. And we have Mike Scott, 
who is presently with Prince, the guitar player, and he's great. We have Peter Schimke, who's a great pianist out of the Twin Cities that plays, that has performed with a lot of jazz artists out of New York when he was living there. We have Enrique Toussaint. He's the bass player from uh, Mexico, and he's uh, presently with Paul Anka. And Stokely Williams, who's the lead singer for Mint Condition, he's playing drums with me. So he's and a drummer, he's, too, yeah. Oh, my God, wow. he's an incredible drummer. Very good drummer. So bass, that's the band. And we recently recorded an album, and hopefully it will be released the latter part of the summer, if not September, and then we will be having a CD release party here. But the only thing is that everyone is, ba not everyone, but half of the band is on tour. Eric's going with to, to Japan with Sheila E. Main condition there on tour. Mike Scott is on tour, and Enrique Toussaint is on tour. So I have to wait till the summer is over. See, see, that's one problem I notice with a lot of a lot of the people, including yourself. You, you're such talented people that <laughs> you're 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 always busy, and and it's the the struggle is to get everybody in the place at one time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the thing is that, and the, Mike Scott always tells me, he goes, "I'm just waiting for your band to take off," because then if I, if there's enough money and there's good work and enough recognition for the band, then we we can still do other gigs. But we know that the main focus will be something else. Yeah, I really have to compliment you in that you become uh, very involved with the Minneapolis Minneapolis scene and, and just all the talented musicians out there just staying there. And, and when they're not traveling worldwide, go to the weekly, like you, you mentioned before, at, at Bunkers on mm -hmm. uh, Thursday night. You just don't, you're not, you're not staying home flipping the, the TV channel, right? No. Yeah. No, and then at the end of this summer, I'm getting a little home studio, ah, and see. I want to just have, just have access to it, whenever, 24 hours, and just start recording. See that that's going to be something special. So watch out. Yeah. <laughs> when when you're putting together a, a home studio like that, well, what kind of advice do you, do you go? Who, who who do you ask? Well, there are two engineers. Actually, there are a few engineers that I'm talking to, but we haven't gotten into like detailing because it's not till the end of the summer um there's tony axdale he's a wonderful bass player and engineer here and there's ken chastine there's a few friends that i've been asking and i don't need an elaborate studio either it, it's just it's just the amount of uh the, the quality of the work that goes in so so oh, well, thank you. <laughs> so look out flight time, right? That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, let, let me go back uh, a few years when you were, you were growing up in, in the Bay Area and also when you were younger out in uh, Europe. Um, what kind of musical influences and what was Astaire listening to back then? Well, before I moved to Europe, I was listening because there are nine in my family, um, ranging from Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, or Sergio Mendez and Brazil 66, to Inacada de Vida, to Vanilla Fudge, to Tower Power, and then a lot of Motown. When I was in high school, at least, I loved Motown and the Philadelphia sound. And that contrasted with salsa, because I was singing in a lot of salsa bands there. And, yeah, and listening to Motown. How about when you're traveling on tour? Do you, do you buy a lot of CDs while you're on the road? I do. Not a lot, but if I have time, I try to get to a music store. Mm -hmm. I had bought. I was only able to buy one that I really liked because I didn't get to a big record store, and that's one with Hector Lavoe, one of my favorite salsa singers. And I started listening to a lot of jazz when I moved out to Amsterdam. That was the first place I lived in Europe. And one of my favorite jazz singers is Chet Baker. Oh, he's fantastic. Oh. Yeah, wow. Yeah, so Chet Baker, as far as jazz singers that I really liked and I have listened to, mm, Chet Baker, Sarah Vaughn, mm, a lot of Johnny Hartman, you know, Nancy Wilson. Do Those you ones I really listen to. And then Brazilian singers, my favorite of all time is Elise Regina. Mm. 
Have you heard of her? I've heard of the name, but, you know. Oh, you have to hear yeah. some of her music. Yeah. It's beautiful. That, that, that's for homework uh, within the next couple of days, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> How about um, off the top of your head, do you have any uh, collaborations in mind that people you, you just would love to be in the studio with to record something? Oh, gosh. Sting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Seal, because he has a wonderful voice. I would love to do something like that. Some like uh, Herbie Hancock. It's a variety of different things. I would like to do a jazz album of just straight ahead jazz also. There's different little projects I want to do, and I eventually will do them too. So and a salsa album. I would like to work with the producer of... Have you heard of Mark Anthony? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, his producer, the one who does, who writes and arranges most of his songs, I'll tell you who he is right now. A bit of it. Cuco Peña. Okay. Angel Cuco Peña. He's just amazing. Because I was singing with a lot of salsa bands in the Bay Area. Then I formed my own salsa band in Amsterdam. And while I was here, while well, the first bands I started, performing with was a salsa band in the Twin Cities. Well, I definitely would love to see see your band because, I mean, Eric Leeds, he, he's just a great, great musician. And, you know, you, you've got a fantastic band there. So mm, Thank yeah. you. And he's funny. <laughs> he's hilarious. Now, how about the uh, the TC Jammers on Thursday night out at Bunkers? Um, when you're playing in that, what, what kind of uh, feel does the TC Jammers have? More of a funk. Okay. So it's been really good for me because I've I play my drums not in a Latin with the Latin format or even feel. I kind of go with the bass drum and the bass, and I've invented for me. I come up well, not invented, but I've come up with different rhythms that I really like that go that I think go well with that style. And uh, I was actually browsing through St. Paul Peterson's website a little while back. And I saw your picture up there. Do you know what's up there? You guys what? were jamming. Uh, you, you were jamming with Paul Peterson, right? Oh, that's right. And they came and took a picture. I didn't know that. Yeah, they have uh, yourself and uh, Jelly Beans up there playing guitar, and and you're playing percussion and um, a few other people. He he put them up on his website recently. So. Oh really? Yeah. You know that I won best vocalist uh, in TwinCitySearch.com. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Someone called me. Stokely said. Hey! <laughs> and he informed me about uh, if the results were in about two months ago or something. Oh, congratulations on that, yeah. Uh, thank you. So, so they have to send the award to your home soon. <laughs> yeah. No, they haven't sent me anything. <laughs> come on, people. Come on, the stairs waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Come on, get to it. <laughs> so, you know, the Dakota... Um, actually, I, I've, uh, I came across a CD. Von Freeman recorded a live CD out there. Uh-huh. Um, is also, it, Mark Murphy. I just recorded an album with the Mark He's Murphy. Amazing. You've oh, heard okay. of him, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. The jazz singer. Yeah. And I sang a duet with him. And his last CD, and it's unfortunate not that many people have heard it. It's just wonderful. It's Latin Cole Porter with uh, Tom Harrell, featuring Tom Harrell. And the arrangements were uh, written by Al Bent, a trombone player out of the Bay Area. So you're you're just so busy and and, and the main thing I, I I see is being creative, you know. How 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 about the passport? Any uh, additional pages added? Oh yeah. yeah, I have a new one altogether. Oh okay. Because <laughs> I'm going to be traveling. Yeah, and uh, we should remind our listeners that uh, Star Godinez will be appearing with George Benson at the Montreal Jazz Festival at the Plaza des Arts, and uh, it will be. On July 4th, and uh, it's a fantastic venue, I'm told. I, I was in the venue last year. Um, I saw Max Roach and Mal Waldron uh, perform oh, in the same area, different different theater. But uh, your good friend Prince will be there two days after. And I know. Ha have you been up to Montreal? No. Oh, wow. Never. That's one thing that I'm really excited because when I was living in Europe, I toured throughout many parts of Europe and different parts of South America. And I'm from the United States, but I've never really acquainted myself with the United States. So now I am. I'm traveling to different states, so I'm really excited about that. I, I think that the the true testament of that that festival I was reading um, 
a, a jazz publication. I, I forget exactly which one, but it was, it was a top notch. And they had they were asking musicians, jazz musicians, what was their favorite festival. And um, I think the overwhelming response was the Montreal Festival. Uh, a lot of the concerts are for free. I know for George Benson, it's a paying concert, but you know, I, I think you, you're going to want to come back with your own band pretty soon. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what's next. That's yeah. what I want to do next. So uh, let, let's get, let's get back and just uh, we're going to play the second song that you have on so it seems, uh, so it seems on uh, unsigned twin cities, and that's available for uh, ordering very shortly on unsignedrecordings.com. Jackie Thompson is the executive producer, and uh, Esther is on the CD. And so it seems. Um, how did you create this one? Well, that song I wrote, oh, gosh, years ago. And one day before I, uh, one of my visits to the United States, I played it for my brother on the piano. And I somewhat forgot about it. Then I, I left, and I went back to, the, to Europe. When I moved back, my brother said, hey, I said, look. And then he played his arrangement, and I said, oh, gosh, let's record that. So while I was going back and forth to Maui, I left it in his hands to hire the musicians to record the song. And I would just come back and do the vocals and some some background and some percussion. So um, that's how that one came about. And he, David Godinez, that's his name, my brother, he arranged it. And it's just, he did a phenomenal job. And we're going to listen to it right now. And we're also going to thank Esther for stopping by the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. And this is the Minneapolis music special, Esther Godinez. And look for uh, a great live album later on in the fall. And she will, we're going to have you back on the show. I, I really need to have you on the show once that's ready. Okay. And uh, our continued support will be there and catch up with you in Montreal and meet we're you up there. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank and, you very much. And we'll let the people know that they need to go to unsignedrecordings.com to get the, all the information on Esther Godinez and the Unsigned Twin Cities Project. You can take a listen to the uh, song samples, and uh, I don't think many t people are going to be disappointed. So. Oh, good. That song was mixed by Ray Obiedo, by oh, the way. He's worked with Chile a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was living right upstairs from me when I was living in the Bay Area. We are neighbors. <laughs> Do you get back there often? Well, I'm going on, I'm leaving on Friday, actually, to go to the Bay Area. I'm to have where there's a surprise birthday party for my mother. She doesn't know I'm coming. And what's your mother's name? Refugio. Okay. So it's going to be a nice weekend, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, enjoy yourself out there and come back and, and, and rest up for, for that another world tour again. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Oh, my pleasure. We'll we'll have you back very shortly. Thank.